Hey everyone, thought I'd do a video today to show you how to properly secure your bicycle onto a platform style hitch rack. I was curious myself to see how much it would take to move the bike out of its secured position. Um, so I simulated as if I was to turn my vehicle left or right, how much the bike would roll one way or the other. So I took a couple videos to show this, to demonstrate this, and to help educate people on the proper way to secure with this style rack. If you have a Rad Rover, uh, then this might definitely be helpful because I also go through how the fender on the front also affects the securement of the bike. So here you can see I demonstrate as if I was to turn my vehicle to the right it would cause my bike to move backwards. And I was very surprised after I saw this and tested this out in person. Uh, I was not expecting the bike to actually move at all because it seems very secure, but if you put a little bit of force on there, which I'm sure driving down the road and you make a sharp right hand turn, that's definitely gonna be a lot of force on that bike. And as you can see from this video here, just simply pulling back on it, simulating that motion, you can see that the front tire actually comes out of the cradle and it causes that pivoting arm to roll backwards with the tire. Um, definitely not a safe securement by any means. And you can see in this clip, I removed my front fender and I was able to take the pivoting arm and lock it down as close to the front forks as possible. This of course, as you can see in the video, uh, allows the bike to have very little movement. It keeps it fairly tight into the front cradle. It does come up just a slight bit, um, but it's definitely a lot more secure than having that pivoting arm uh, secured further up front on the tire. And then moving the pivoting arm further up, you can see again, it just comes loose and we move it even further up. It's the same thing, it's, it's just loose again. Too much free movement. So everyone with the Rad Rover using the Kuwat MV 2.0 rack, you can see from this video um, that it fits very well. If you don't have the fender on there, you know, you can get that pivoting arm, that locking arm as close up to the forks as need be. It doesn't have any interference with any of the brake cables. Um, unfortunately, if can't have the fender installed that's definitely a downside unless you modify it uh, but there's plenty of clearance this is a nice uh, rubber molding up here at the top so it's not going to scratch the paint and you got just barely enough clearance from this plastic lip all the way up to the side of the fork so just barely enough clearance For the people that want measurements, you can see that with the arm in place, you have right about one inch between the fork and the locking arm. So if you were to have a fender, that's about how much space you can fit. Um, and I might even go as far as uh, taking the Dremel tool to my fender and shaving down the front end. So that way I still have the water protection on the back end, but I actually might do that and that video will come at a later time. So if you do purchase the Kuwat NV2.0 and you have the fat bike uh, extension kit, which is the straps for the rear, it also comes with a Velcro strap for the front. I'm not exactly sure where this is supposed to go. I'm pretty sure it wraps around the front wheel here. I really can't think of anywhere else that it would go. Um, it comes in at two foot long but you might be able to wrap it around the, the forks up here and the, the locking arm, but I really don't think that's where it goes. Um, if you happen to know where exactly for sure you're supposed to put this, uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's on the wheel right here, but if you do know for sure, please leave a comment for me uh, to educate others as well. But honestly, with the fat bike kit, because you have to buy that for the extension if you use anything greater than three inches for a tire width, you have to get this extender arm. But overall, uh, this whole rear strap mechanism 
is definitely cheap. That's the huge downside to this rack. It's quality parts everywhere, but this whole assembly right here is just cheap. It's cheap plastic. It feels like cheap plastic. Um, I don't know how long it's going to last, so we might have to do a durability review in about a year. So as you can hear, it's definitely cheap plastic. Um, that's why I was thinking, what can I do with these Velcro straps they included? Because this stuff is kind of cheap back here. And what if it breaks? So what I decided to do is to actually wrap these around the center part of the rack right here because they're um, perfectly fit. They'll, they'll perfectly fit right back here. And if this happens to break, when you're out of town or you're at the trailhead, whatever it is, at least you'll have a backup way to secure your bike to the rack. So it's probably a good idea to take this strap and wrap it around and just keep it there for emergency uses. And thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, just leave a comment right below.